Doug Flo and Michael Kramer for their experimental approach to alleviating global poverty. And here we have some brief biographic data about our uh, laureates. Dr. Abhijit Banerjee was born in Mumbai in India in 1961. He received his PhD from Harvard University in the United States in 1988, and he's currently the Ford Foundation International Professor of Economics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in the United States. Dr. Esther Duflo was born in 1972 in Paris, in France. She received her PhD from MIT in 1999, and she's currently the Abdul Latif Jamil Professor of Poverty Alleviation and Development Economics at MIT. Uh, and Drs. Banerjee and Duflo are a couple, not only in research, but also private. Dr. Michael Kramer was born in 1964. He's an American, and he got his PhD from Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the United States. And he remains there now as the Gates Professor of Developing Societies. And with that, I'd like to ask Peter Fredriksson uh, to make some introductory remarks about the prize. Thank you, Jonathan. So this year's prize in the economic sciences is about alleviating global poverty. Now, how to reduce global poverty is a fundamental but also a daunting question. This year's laureates have shown that it's best to break down this daunting issue to smaller, more precise questions. Questions you can credibly answer. They have examined the impact of interventions in various important areas, such as education, health, agriculture, and access to credit. Which interventions work? Why do they work? And are the benefits greater than the costs? Effective policy alleviation requires that we can answer these questions. And the most credible way of answering them is to try particular interventions in field experiments. This experimental approach has completely reshaped research in development economics. The results have had a clear impact on policy and keeps improving our ability to fight global poverty. Professor Jakob Svensson will now describe the research contributions of the laureates in greater detail. Thank you. So, uh, despite the fact that there has been massive progress in the last few decades, global poverty remains a very big problem. In low and middle income countries, more than 700 million people still live in extreme poverty. One in three children are malnourished, and most children leave school without basic skills in reading, writing, and mathematics. So how to effectively reduce The Roy so how to effectively reduce global poverty remains a very important question. This year's prize in economic sciences It helps us identify the causes of poverty. Second, it helps us draw conclusions about causal effects of policies to fight global poverty. And finally, it facilitates the analysis of cost effectiveness across different options or policies to reduce global poverty. To illustrate the new approach,
question about why are school children not learning are broken down into more detailed and specific questions, such as what's the impact of providing more school inputs, for example, textbooks? How can we reduce teacher absence and what's the impact of such a reform? And then it tries to answer these specific questions using field... properly designed, it can tell us why a specific intervention works or why it does not work. That is, it can tell us more about human behavior. With sufficiently many such field experiments, we can draw firm conclusions about causes and about policies. And let me stay with the learning example or learning crisis uh, question and give you some example of what we today know. By Michael Kramer, in the very first study using this new experimental approach. On the other hand, we know that reforms that better match teaching to children's learning levels are of great value. And one example of such an intervention is the Teaching at the Right Level program. That was an intervention evaluated and redesigned through a series of field experiments by Banerjee and the health, credit, agricultural transformation, and so forth. And in all these areas, it provides evidence of what works and why. Some interventions have been scaled up. Others have influenced policy more indirectly. And some policies have been abandoned simply because they were proven to be ineffective thereby saving resources that governments or NGOs can use on more... ...transformation, development economics in, is now largely an experimental field. The research generated by this new approach has already had a clear impact on policy and it keeps improving our ability to alleviate global poverty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jakob. Now we hope that we can get one of our new laureates with us on the phone. who woke you up an hour ago to give you the news about your prize. Uh, thank you for being yes. with us. Everything okay? You have thank had you so your much. cup of coffee, I hope? Yes, yes. I have, it, uh, I have my tea in front of me. Very good. Uh, I'm sitting here in the session hall of the Academy of Sciences, and there's a large number of journalists here. I'm sure they would like to ask you some questions. So, are you ready for them? Absolutely. Who would like to start? The goal is to make sure that the fight against poverty is based on scientific evidence. It starts from the idea that often the poor are reduced to, to caricatures, and often even try, people who try to help them 
do not actually understand what are the deep roots of the problems that are addressing the poor people. Are, poor people are supposed to be either uh, completely desperate or lazy or entrepreneurial, but... as possible. And that's how we um, uh, developed and moved in the fight against poverty, the experimental approach, to better understand what are the reasons for particular problems, for example, the, the learning crisis that uh, Professor Svensson was talking about, and uh, what can be done about it, what works, what doesn't work, and why. And what was the reaction when you uh, received the news that you got the prize? Reason is that it's something unique about the, the Nobel Prize in economics among lacks, I think, a, a change in the world and a change in the in the field of economics beyond our individual work. And um, it takes some time, usually, for this to happen. And in a sense, we are too young for that. But I think what it reflects is the, the incredible uh, collective work that this is. So I think the three of us stand for so that it really reflects the fact that it has become a, a movement, a movement that is much larger than us, but we are delighted to, to, to have this opportunity to represent. Thank you. More questions. Yes, gentlemen there. Uh, hello, this is Jens Nordström from TV4 in Stockholm, Sweden. Congratulations, Dr. Duflo. Uh, I'm curious, you're the second woman who has won the uh, economics prize ever. Is this important? Um, we are at a time where we are starting to realize in the profession that the way that we uh, conduct each other uh, privately and publicly is not conducive to all the time to a very good environment for, uh, for women and um, showing that it is um, you know, possible for a, woman, for a woman to succeed and to be recognized for success, I hope is going to you know, inspire many, many other uh, woman to these risks that we see uh, considering brexit uh, trade wars etc i think we live in uh, turbulent times or uh, um, in a sense, hard times where uh, many people are, are, many individuals uh, in rich countries are uh, deeply concerned about their position in the world and they are, feel that they have lost uh, their dignity and that they are not. For, uh, for people who live in our richer countries who might not be as poor, but in a sense also have very difficult life and that understand, understand what these problems are and what the sources of these problems and what can work to address them could um, um, make a difference in the, in the, in the future. 
so the in in the very short run it will will have to kind of um try to um weather the turmoil and in the face of all of the disruptions that they experience. My final question is a lot of your research is about alleviating poverty. You've just been given a sizable amount of money. How will you use it? When, when I was about eight or nine, I read a, a biography of uh, Marie Curie. And when she got her first Nobel Prize, she, she bought a, a gram of radium. And uh, I thought this was really fantastic. over there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Johan Schick from the TV channel EFN. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Duflo. Uh, I would like to ask about the two major strategies from the richer world uh, towards uh, uh, poverty in, in uh, developing countries. And I think of, on the one hand, foreign aid, on, on the other hand, uh, trade liberalization. Uh, could you make a comparison between these two and uh, tell us... And some people uh, uh, think that the potential of foreign aid to transform the country is radical. But the truth is that the amount of money that it represents for developing countries is actually small relative to their own budget, except in some very, very, very uh, small, very, very poor countries. Most of the money that is being spent on the poor is being spent by the developing countries themselves with their own resources and their own budget. Of course, aid can play a critical role, uh, both in... Uh Uh, experiment with new approaches that they can then implement on, on large scale. Uh, it's much easier to do that with uh, aid money with, than with your own budget because the budgets are so tight. Uh, but the role cannot be uh, overstated one way or the other. It cannot solve all the problem uh, even if we uh, if we try the best. Now, if we look at if we lo you look at trade, trade uh, an opening to to trade is of course uh, very important. And when the um a market to the products from developing countries it wouldn't be sufficient because entering uh, international trade, breaking into, an, say, a European market for a farmer in Kenya is not going to happen without considerable uh, help. Uh, they would have to learn what to produce. They would have to learn what to produce at the right standard of quality. They would have to find... aid can to some extent uh, um, help uh, financing. So you really want to think of these two, not as substitute, but as complement. Thank you very much. Uh, one last question, lady over there. Um, congratulations, Esther. I'm a reporter from Nordic Chinese Times, and uh, as far as I know, many 
uh, Nobel uh, laureates in Thank you very much. Um, so I have, an, I, I, I have done almost no work in China personally, but again, uh, researchers, uh, many of them uh, have worked in China. And, uh, and that research, of course, is pertinent for China because it took place in China. And uh, even though China is, has... An understanding how uh, people uh, work there and function, what their problems are and how to address them is as pertinent as ever. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I think that was the last question. So many thanks again for being with us at this press conference. And now we look forward very much to uh, your and your husband's visit uh, to Stockholm in December. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. extra bonus. Uh, I'm wondering, there's always been a talk of the small number of females, there were only one person before, Esther Duflo, who got the prize. Has this discussion influenced uh, the committee in any way? I, I, I'll give the word to Peter in a second, but let me just say that I think this reflects that there are more and more women, more and more women scientists going in also into the economic sciences field. Yes, I mean, this is a question that we take extremely seriously. Uh, uh, as Joran said, partly it reflects how the profession has evolved over time. So over time, we're seeing more women coming into academics. And over time, I'm convinced that we're going to see more female laureates as well. One may note that one of the best predictors of, of the Nobel Prize is the so-called so Bates-Clark Medal that's given to... Um, researchers under the age of 40, and the first female to receive that was in 2007. Uh, Esther de Flore received it in 2010. So that gives you some idea on, of, of, of that this is, you know, the female entry into, uh, into prestigious academic positions in, in, in the economics is relatively recent. But I'd like to add one more thing. It's important to, to uh, remember that Esther Duflo gets the prize, not because she's a woman, but because she's made the most important contributions. Absolutely, and that's, that's our job, to evaluate the research contribution. That's our sole job. Uh, Esther Duflo mentioned that she, uh, she mentioned that uh, she thought it was important that women receive this prize, as it shows that there are role models around. Do you agree that that should be something that you should take into consideration? Uh, we are in all the um, areas of the Nobel Prize, we are encouraging nominators to take a broad perspective uh, with regard to women, ethnicity, geography, uh, and we're following that very carefully and may to see uh, the impact on, on, on the number of nominations. Then we have educated ourselves uh, by inviting experts on, for instance, gender issues to lecture to us and be, uh, with internal discussions. In the end, we have to give the prize to the most worthy individual, uh, whether he or she is Scandinavian or not, as Nobel wrote in his last will. Uh, so in the end, uh, gender or ethnicity does not matter, but we have to make sure that the best scientists are nominated and evaluated. citizenship. You'll have to excuse me if I dwell on the question. Uh, I'm also a bit curious on the reasoning behind uh, that poverty uh, research gets the prize this year. Is there any uh, external factor that, or was it just a time to give a, a prize for uh, alleviating poverty? I think, well, as 
Uh, both Peter and Jakob to comment on that. Who would like to start? Should I start? I mean, glo global poverty is always a, a major issue. And as Jakob described, the laureates have really transformed how development economics No, I, I think you, you mentioned exactly why it takes time to uh, evaluate a particular contribution and uh, this particular contribution has had a, a huge impact in a relatively short period of time, maybe in 20, 25 years, which is maybe not uh, typically the, uh, the case and uh, why it came up this year or not uh, last year or three years from now, I actually don't know. Time was right. As this, uh, the res results uh, come up, uh, one of them is a bit older than the others. One of them are is. A but younger, has that an importance in, uh, for who started uh, this kind of research and who has concluded it? Yes, uh, a bit uh, in, in a very simple way, one could say that this whole experimental approach started with uh, Michael Kramer uh, and a set of uh, studies he was conducting in, uh, in Kenya in the mid-1990s. And then relatively uh, quickly after that, approach and broaden the experimental approach and thereafter the three uh, laureates have uh, contributed in many ways I've talked to about some other ways in my short presentation but there are in uh, in other important ways such as how do you draw more firm conclusions how can you talk about issues of generalizability and so forth where the three laureates have uh, all made important uh, individual and combined contributions. Thank you. More questions? If not, it's time to close this press conference. Uh, ready for next year's press conferences. But we'll close the press conference and there will be opportunities for individual interviews. Thank you very much. Thank you.